We left Manly at 5.30 in the morning as we needed to be tucked up in pit water before the forecasted 30 knot winds hit. Whenever we do passages, Mum wants us to put a rod in the water straight away in the hope that we can have fish for lunch, but today was not our day. We're trying to sail in pit water. It's uh, only blowing about two knots. We're doing one and a half, which is which is actually not too bad. We uh, we do have the screecher out and the sail out. Now that's all working, but it's not really doing all that much. But uh, you know you're in trouble when the kayakers are going faster than you. Upon arriving in pit water, our first stop was Refuge Bay. Our initial experience here was so fantastic that we couldn't resist returning. The boys had an absolute blast stand up paddle boarding, playing on the beach and exploring beneath the breathtaking waterfall. The world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. This is what we waited for. Baron Joey Lighthouse. And Byron, how are you feeling about the walk ahead? I'm so excited because it's a beautiful day today. Are you really excited? Yeah. The walk to the lookout is a steep 800 metre climb. As you make your way to the top, you are greeted with spectacular views of Palm Beach and the Pacific Ocean. Sailing certainly brings its highs and lows, but moments like these, immersing yourself in the world's true beauty and sharing quality time with your family, makes every challenge worthwhile. When you get to the top, you will be greeted with an historic landmark, the Baron Joey Lighthouse, built in 1881 from sandstone that was quarried on site. The lighthouse, its oil room and keeper's cottage all retained their original unpainted sandstone finish. We left Pitwater last night. We stayed at uh, Baron Joey, right near the lighthouse. Um, we Probably, I think we left at like maybe 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. What we wanted to do was just make sure we had plenty of time coming into Nelson's Bay. We're actually making record time. Zygo is doing amazing. Um, we're, we're sitting at about 8 knots uh, in about, oh, I don't know, about 8, 12 knots apparent. Uh, 8 knots apparent. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we're just about to pass the, the parking lot before the ships. And we should be getting into Nelson Bay in a few hours. You're a lonely sailor. 
Cause your soul is made of wind and rain Doubts and blame I'm a weary pirate And my heart is made of dust and grain And spoiled champagne I've got troubles, I've got sins I'm my worst enemy But I've still got a lot to give So I said, hey, don't you wanna come? Come and run away with me Hey, won't you come, won't you come? And say by chance, don't you wanna make A man who fully understands I say he loves hard and what are you looking forward to doing in Port Stephens? Uh, Anything else? No. Okay. So we left Sydney today, um, Pittwater actually, and we headed up the coast. Uh, we had about 10 knots of apparent wind coming from behind, so it was a really comfortable sail. We only had sort of half a metre to one metre swells and we part Zygo just over here and we're looking forward to spending a couple of beautiful days in Port Stephens and maybe even going swimming with some sharks. Adjacent to Corlett Beach lies the Anchorage Marina. Here you have the choice to reserve a berth or opt for a more affordable mooring buoy at $50 per night. The marina offers a dinghy service as needed along with access to amenities such as the fuel and water dock, laundry, newly renovated bathrooms and a courtesy car. The staff at the Anchorage Marina are exceptionally accommodating, going the extra mile to arrange for Byron to visit a local jiu-jitsu club for some training. Along the marina's walkway are these gorgeous sculptures which are part of the Travel Everywhere with Love project. These captivating artworks have graced major cities symbolising themes of love and acceptance. One of my favourite things to do while waiting for the washing was to walk along the rock wall and one day I was lucky enough to spot this gorgeous wobbegong. With the fish continuing to elude Dad, he, wa he was determined not to let them get the better of him. So when we stumbled across a local tackle shop, Dad took the opportunity to stock up on some lures and get some fishing tips. We are heading to Irukandji Shark and Ray Aquarium and we're going to go and swim with some reef sharks. So there'll be some nurse sharks and um, some new white tip reef sharks. So I've got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous, but excited at the same time. Irukandji Shark and Ray Encounters is situated just a short 20 minute drive from Port Stephens. You'll find a variety of pools where you can interact with and feed sharks and rays. It is definitely a trip worth making.
Oh, very good. Our final stop in Port Stephens was Fane Cove, a serene inlet only open from the west with calm waters. It was the perfect stop for a peaceful night's rest before heading north. The locals did advise that Fane Cove is a breeding ground for bull sharks, so swimming was off the agenda for us. We've spent the last week or so in Port Stephens where the wildlife has been absolutely amazing. We've been lucky enough to see dolphins every day and we spent our last night at Fane Cove which was absolutely beautiful. It was so calm and we were so lucky to get a good night's sleep before we head out today on our passage to Coffs. We've been looking at the weather for the better part of a week now and this is the first window that we've actually had that looks reasonable. So we're going to give it a go, see how we go. Hopefully we'll get to Coffs probably about 7am tomorrow morning. We do have a little bit of weather chasing us, but I think it'll still be okay because the wind should only be around 18 knots. Um, but right now I'm just busy getting the boat organised, doing the final dishes, getting everything cleared away to make sure that nothing falls over while we're on passage. The kids are still asleep, which is great. So hopefully they'll sleep for another few hours and we'll be well underway by the time they wake up. Well, the time's come to leave Port Stephens. It's been absolutely beautiful here. There's beaches, there's Fame Co, there's all sorts of great marinas and shops and all sorts. But we are heading off to Coffs, hopefully a 24 hour run from Port Stephens to Coffs. We should, it's eight o'clock now in the morning. I think we should be getting in around Coffs around seven, eight o'clock. It should be a pretty easy run. We've got about 15 to 20 knots. Um, it's gonna get a bit more spritey. Towards the end there, uh, we have a front sort of chasing us and I think it catches us just before we get into Coffs. Uh, so we might see 25, dusting to 30-ish, uh, but we'll see how we go. That'll be the early hours of the morning, so I'm sure I'll be on ship at that time. As it happened, the weather was worse than forecast. With the wind sitting around 30 knots for most of the trip, gusting up to 35 knots. Alongside a three metre swell, by morning, the family was tired of battling through the challenging conditions. Thanks to Dad's great advice and our always ready plan B, we decided we needed to head into Trial Bay, drop the hook and wait for the weather to pass and get a good night's sleep. Trial Bay turned out to be an incredible stop, even though it was a little rolly. We were delighted by dolphins swimming around the boat and the breathtaking sunsets that painted the sky in vibrant shades of orange. Soon enough, it was time to lift the hook and continue on our journey. Finally arriving in Coffs Harbour, we spent the night before making the final leg of our journey to the Gold Coast.
We enjoyed a peaceful night sail, the boat gently rolling with the swell under the starlit sky. Crossing the Southport Seaway brought a moment of relief. But as every sailor knows, circumstances can shift in an instance. Our sense of calm turned to high stress when we realised the starboard hull was rapidly taking on water. After quickly identifying the problem and stopping the water, the family quickly sprung into action to clean up. It was time for plans to change again, and rather than taking a few days to explore the waterways around the Gold Coast, it was straight back to Brisbane for us. Just another day living an unpredictable life at sea. Good to be home. So good to be home. It's been a rough morning and um, yeah, I think it feels really good to be home. But we didn't plan to be home today, but that's okay. I'm feeling good about it and looking forward to spending some time with family. When we were back in Brisbane, there was time to visit family, do lots of boat jobs and eat my favourite sushi. And of course, jujitsu. I am number one, I'm number two. If I'm not the one, I'm uncomfortable. See the competition I've been running through. Leveled up, I only see him in my rear view. Switch. Yeah, I'm ballin', yeah, I'm ballin', been ballin'. Switch. Yeah, I'm ballin', yeah, I'm ballin', been ballin'. Yeah. I'm winning, get buckets from the court side to the nosebleeds, yeah, they love it. Yeah, they love it. I'm winning, get buckets from the first in and the last out. First take, I'm hotter than hot, hotter than some boiling water, I bubble the pot, team full of ballers, baby. Join us next time as we start our trip from Brisbane and head up towards Bundaberg. Time is up, we can wait for better days, but the days won't come, show me life.